Good morning, folks. We've got earthquake science, weather, space weather, and a fireball. But right now, right side, you should be able to see the departing active region actually getting active. So let's start there over at spaceweathernews.com. We're finding the last 24 hours on our star revealing mostly Earth-facing quiet. Do have dark coronal holes turning through with the activity and motion on the right side. The activity did offer a few minor X-ray events, not even cracking C-class flare range, and with the tiny flare maker heading to the far side that leaves one sunspot group on the disk, still crammed in tight, but with a negative decay at the neutral boundary between them, less chance of flaring. Let's quickly use 304 angstroms to see how those little flashes did not produce much ejecta, also seeing a plasma filament dance through the southern polar crown towards the far side as well. Coronal hole, transequatorial facing Earth. Its solar wind is due to arrive early in the week. Its earthquake factors are top tier in the IMF and kinetic alpha waves, but as of today we're still enduring the coronal hole stream from the north. You can see the bump up in the middle panel. The increased speed is from the weak northern opening. The one from the currently Earth-facing opening we'll get this week should do a bit more than offer some instability in Earth's magnetosphere. We're coming to a fireball seen in Russia this week. I may remind you that so many seem to be filmed there because they have the largest land area and their insurance rules dictate nearly ubiquitous use of dash cams, security cams, etc. Let's look at GO-16 shot of yesterday over the United States, North America actually. What you should be noticing is the sparse activity in the west down through Mexico but which explodes with clouds and storms around sunset. The lightning tracker reveals that best of all. Couple sparse flashing areas and then the entire mountain range from Mexico up into Canada lights up. Gorgeous, but also scary. Mexico's run of dealing with these storms has been deadly for a week, with flash floods claiming most of the property and lives taken by the storm. Looking at the opposite problem in weather, we go to Latvia. Drought has reached the point where farmers are in serious jeopardy nationwide, and you can see their precipitation map with that region stained brown. Failure to hit solidly positive NAO trends is crushing their moisture belt and sending it south. And here are our top stories. First, 100 Ring of Fire earthquakes above magnitude 7 from 2006 to 2015 were studied and it shows conclusively the total electron content does change in the atmosphere before the big earthquake. In the tropics, you often need to look more at the magnetic conjugate points while near high latitude, the anomalies do seem associated with the epicenter. Two of the largest quakes during that time period struck Sumatra on the same day. April 11, 2012 is the only day on record with two magnitude 8 earthquakes. They hit the same area, and they had a significant electric anomaly over their epicenter. For more on this, the featured link today is Electroquake, the introduction. It is also found on QuakeWatch.net's homepage. If you've not seen this yet, oh boy. We greatly appreciate your support. We've got your wind maps, shots of our star to close. We'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now it's 425 a.m. in the new valley of the sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.